Hey everybody, Chad here at Turner's Warehouse, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make this Southwest Gold Nugget Ring. This is a very cool ring, it's very simple, it only uses a few materials, and I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. Okay everybody, so let's get started. To make this ring, we just need a few supplies. We're gonna have our tungsten uh, channel core ring, as you see here. These are awesome, heavy duty, strong rings. We're gonna use some gold mica here. Two stones in this project. We're gonna use iron pyrite, which is a real stone. It kinda has a gold look, that's why we're using it for this. And of course, Southwest turquoise. This is real turquoise from here in Arizona. And you will get more than you need in this project kit so you can make rings in the future. I'm also using my ring maker station with the ring mandrel, UV resin, a UV light, and I like to have these uh, magnifying glasses because it's easier for me to see. I'll also use a tweezers and a toothpick, and the toothpick will be for dipping the resin and placing the stones. So first thing I want to do is put my ring on the mandrel. You can see I've covered it in tape here. That just helps keep my mandrel clean when I'm a little messy, as you'll see in the future here. Uh, but this allows me to rotate and use the mandrel to hold the ring while I'm making it, not just when I'm on the lathe spinning it. First thing I wanna do is pour out a little uh, UV resin here, and I just keep it in this little bottle. And I just use the toothpick, toothpick to dip in and spread it around. And I'm just coating the bottom of the ring very lightly. I'll move the toothpick side to side, run it in the edge of the, the ring to not have big clumps or groups, and that'll help keep the, the resin a little more even. Although you will see uh, later on, it does clump up a little bit if you let it sit too long. Uh, and that's just part of how it looks, so it's kind of a cool thing. But I'm gonna sprinkle in the mica gold now. The, Funny thing about this stuff is, is it's powder, but it really is clumpy. And you'll see right here, it really clumps out, which isn't ideal, but it's fine because we can spread it out. Normally I would love to just sprinkle it around the edge, but since it clumped out, I'll use the toothpick and just spread it around. And my goal here isn't to have a ton of this mica uh, in the channel. I just want to coat the bottom so that I have that gold look behind all the stuff. And by using the toothpick and going back and forth here it kind of spreads it out flat and it makes it look really good so even though it looks a total mess right now this is actually working just how we want it to work and you can go around as much or as little as you need and spread it out you can also wipe it off like this and this will just save you some time later when you're sanding and doing the cleanup and you, don't, you just want to make sure you don't push the paper towel into the channel you don't want to wipe out the middle but now I can begin placing my stones. So I just get a little drop of resin on the toothpick, get my pyrite and my tweezers. And I like to place the stones rather than just dump them in. Um, I feel I get a better look this way and I can kind of make sure they're even and spread out nicely. If I just poured them in, it would be kind of random. I might get them piled up too much or sticking up way further than I want. When I like where they're sitting, I'll hit them with the UV light real quick just to kind of set them in there for, for the duration of the prep here. And you'll see over and over again, I just dip my toothpick in the resin, put a little bit of, of fresh resin on there, place my stones, and just keep moving my way around the ring. This process is very easy. Uh, the UV resin is cool because it doesn't cure until you use the light, unless you're near a the sun or a window or something. But it's really handy to be able to move around, move parts around, and then when you like them, hit them with that light and cure it. You can also use your fingers to block, you know, going further so you don't get UV light all over if you still had a little fresh resin. So I'm just working my way around the ring and you can see why it's handy to be able to rotate that mandrel. You don't want it to spin too much, but you want to be able to rotate it. So there again, a little more fresh resin with the toothpick and place the stones. Now this iron pyrite we're using is exactly that. It's iron, it's a metal. So it will provide a little more of a challenge when we go to sand this down, but we'll get to that here shortly. Here I'm just curing it and you can go back and forth. It, you'll never over cure it, but uh, 
you definitely want to set it so it doesn't move but you can see we're almost all the way around already in just a short amount of time now what we're doing placing these stones I'm giving them a little space a little bit of a gap and that's for two reasons one it'll let the gold show through a little bit and two it'll give us some room to put the turquoise these pyrite nuggets that you'll get in the kit are a little larger than the turquoise they're probably three times the size so you won't fit as many of them but that's a good thing one because they're so hard and two because they're they're very shiny and gold they're it's often called fool's gold uh, and that's why it's a good choice for this southwestern gold ring that in combination with the gold mica will really give it that flash without being too much but here I've made my way all the way around and I'm just placing the last little nugget in there and then I will start adding turquoise and filling in essentially around the pyrite with the turquoise one final UV cure and now we can start with our next step. So every time I bring the toothpick up, hopefully you can see there's a drop of resin on it because I'm just setting it in my little resin bowl over there. And that allows me to put fresh resin on to put the stones in and hold, hold them in place uh, when it's cured. So we're essentially building this ring from the inside out. So we're adding resin layers of things with the stones and the mica, and we're, we're building it up that way. So when I do the stones, I like to put about a half, quarter to half inch probably of, of resin in there. And then I use the wet tip of the toothpick to pick up the stones. Now there again, you could just dump these in there. I don't like to do that because I like to make sure they're, the gaps are all filled in and I put it all around uh, the pyrite. So by using the toothpick, I can pick up a few stones at a time, get them in the ballpark and then use the toothpick to push them around and get them into those little wedges and things. And I've got, a, I've got my magnifiers on here because I like to be able to really get up close and see so I'm you can't see it, but I'm really close to the ring so I can see what I'm doing. And it just helps me as far as getting the, the stones in the right places. And we're going to go around this ring similarly to the pyrite. We're just going to be putting the turquoise in. And I'll keep adding resin a drop at a time, two drops at a time, and putting more stone in. And the, the cool thing about having the pyrite kind of set already is it it acts like a little dam so nothing should slide around even if I didn't cure it. Sometimes you'll tend to forget to cure your resin as you're working and stuff will want to sag or fall out of the ring because of gravity of course. So it's nice to be able to have those little pyrite stones already set to where they can uh, hold things on. Now if you're ever having trouble with your stones not coming off the toothpick or sticking into the ring it just means you don't have enough resin it's too dry so you want to make sure you have enough resin in the channel you can always put a little more on top just to kind of let it flow around the stones and hold them in and then you just keep working your way from point A to point B essentially all the way around the ring this whole process of building the ring doesn't take long less than 10 minutes I would imagine uh, I think this one only took about seven minutes but even if you were doing this for the first time and it took 20, you'd be happy with that because the results are really good, especially for how, how quick it is. So I'm just going to finish up the ring here. I've got just a little bit more uh, to get to the other side, and I'm just filling in that resin. Now we're going to go back in a little bit here and, and coat the top of this so it won't all be full right now you might have some some low spots around the ring and that's totally okay because that's how that's just part of how we're building it this way you can see that toothpick is pretty handy for being able to move stuff around and really working a drop of resin at a time is is ideal because then it's not flowing all over and, and dripping off the other side 
if I was to pour the resin on uh, much more, I would it would it would move around a lot more. So this is a, a control method that allows you to control the amount of flow you have here without without having too much, you still have plenty. And I'm, what I'm doing is just dipping it and putting it on top of the pyrite and it kind of flows around the, the rock. So it's kind of cool how it works. And then just push it around, get that full. I always think that a full ring uh, where there's not a lot of gaps looks better, but it's totally preference of what you like. Um, uh, here you can see my my rocks are sticking a little bit because I don't have enough resin on the toothpick or in the ring. So I'm getting a little more resin, which will help. But I like a full ring. I like a lot of uh, rocks packed in there, stones. I think it looks better and it makes it more interesting to look at. And then, of course, don't forget to cure it every now and then because it will try to come out if you're on the bottom side. But that was pretty quick and we're almost all the way around here so you can see how how this doesn't take a, a huge amount of time but it's already starting to look pretty cool all right just a few final stones here and it will be pretty good once we've once we've packed in the stones uh, i like to rotate the ring and cure it and basically just make sure i didn't miss anything You'll be surprised how you'll go back and look at things and there'll be huge gaps or holes and you'll want to make sure you fill those in. If you didn't double check it by rotating it and looking at it really closely, you might miss that and you would probably be bummed out later when your ring is done and had a huge space in it or, or hole in the, the ring. So you can see now we've got the uh, comparison there. We're going to cure it a little bit more. I live in Arizona, so I've got the sun most days so I like to set it outside for about five minutes and that will just make it rock hard uh, which is pretty cool so now this is the point where we're filling in all the space so we want to we want to use enough resin and you you really can't go overboard here it doesn't matter if you have little piles or a little too much here or there because it sands off really easy but we want to go around the ring and just fill in all the gaps. We want to make sure all the resin is full just above the two channels. So if we're if we're below the channels, we'll have a low spot and it'll be dull. It, we won't be able to shine it, polish it. So we want to make sure and go back and fill it all in. And you'll be able to tell really quickly if it's a low spot or not. Now, this pyrite is taller than the channel. And typically, if you've watched any of my other ring videos, I like to keep everything below the channel. So this is a unique one, and it will change how we do the sanding and polishing just a little bit. But normally I like to keep it below the channel because I like to have clear on top of the stones. I feel that gives it a better shine. The clear magnifies it and makes it look a little more impressive to me. But in this case, we will be sanding the pyrite down to the surface to get that gold nugget look. And that's okay, so just be aware of that. If you've watched the other videos, and I always say keep it below the rim, that is still true, but in some cases we will, of course, have to break that rule. So I've gone all the way around. This thing looks good. I'm going to go ahead and set it out in the sun for five minutes. If you don't have sunny days, you can always just use your lights and cure it you know, for a good few minutes uh, to make sure it's hard. But once it's done and rock hard, you're ready to go. So now I'm on the lathe, I've got the um, Beal Call It Chuck, which is what I prefer, and the Pro Ring Mandrel, and this is for the, the bigger sizes and it fits this ring here. Simply slide it on, these are stepped, you tighten it up, don't over tighten it, uh, you don't wanna, oh, drop the ring, drop the key. Oh, drop the key twice. Let's see if we'll do a third here. <laughs> you don't wanna over tighten it because you don't wanna mess up the ring now tungsten you'd have a hard time messing up but any other you could maybe like a ceramic you could crack it i use that sponge just to drip on the the thing where i'm going to use the abernet the 600 and the zona paper for polishing so zona is six sheets and we'll get to that in a minute 
But I'm going to start with the Abernet uh, at 120, which I would never, ever start at 120, except right now we need to get these pyrite stones down. They're huge uh, in comparison to the ring. And you're going to see my water is clear here, and in just a few minutes it's going to be pretty black because we're essentially sanding iron, uh, sanding metal down, and you can see that black buildup in the water. You'll see it on the ring, and I'll use the sponge to kind of give it a quick rinse. But this stuff is really dirty. So everything I'm using is cut small for one-time use. Uh, so like my Abernet here is cut into this strip, and I'll just use it for this ring. Whereas normally, if I was just sanding resin or something, I could you know, clean it and use it over and over. But this iron metal gets really dirty, and it'll kind of stain everything and gunk it up. So I don't want to risk putting that on another project. So this is all one-time use here. But you can see that slurry of black on there. That's the iron in the, in the water that's come off that's been sanded. And sanding these down, you could use a, a power sander or Dremel, but I don't like to do that just for the risk of nicking the ring. If you hit the ring edge, it's never going to look right. You're never going to get it round again. So I'd rather take the extra couple minutes and sand it. Uh, flat with the 120 and then move on to my normal pol sanding and polishing and this whole process of sanding this ring with the 120 even sanding down the metal stones here um, probably only took about seven eight minutes maybe ten if if I was going too slow but um, start to finish this ring is still pretty quick and it really looks cool so you can see my water here is black, so I'm going to switch that out. But I've already got the ring down flat to where now I can start polishing. So a little fresh water, and I'll start my normal pol polishing process, which is 600, 800 wet dry sandpaper, and then the Zona. The 600 and 800 uh, will do a little more shaping and taking down. You can see it's sanding that iron because look how black that is. Um, once I get to the Zona, there's no, no removal, it's just polishing. So this stuff gets really black. Yeah, you can see that just rinses it right off. And you want to keep that clean because you don't want to rub that grit into your, your ring here while you're sanding. But this 600 will really smooth everything out, get it really looking good. Uh, the 800 will finish it off and then we'll go to the Zona. But you can see on my fingers how black this stuff is. It's pretty cool to watch it come to life, though, from that big, messy chunk. Okay, now we're on to Zona. Like I said, Zona is six sheets. It's from uh, one micron, 30 micron to 1 micron. Green to white is your progression, and it comes in order. And I just cut these little tiny rectangles because I'm only going to use this once. This ring with the iron in it will totally make my zona paper black and and just clog it up and gunk it up so it's a one-time use thing but i'm just going to progress through the six sheets here um, there's no specific amount of time you really just want to do what looks right i usually try to always go a little longer on the next step than i did the step before uh, kind of like with sanding but you can move pretty quickly through zona i'd say probably if you're 30 seconds to a minute each, you're probably more than enough. Um, obviously, some cases you may want to go longer, and that's fine. This ring is so quick that it's worth spending the extra time on the finishing. If you rush it here, you just won't get the good look. So keep it, keep it wet, keep it cool, um, and just polish, polish, polish this thing up. But you can see here I'm already on my third, I think third or fourth uh, pad. It's not really a pad, it's more of a sheet. It comes in a eight and a half by 11 sheet and you can just cut off squares or strips however long you like. I prefer these little like one inch by half inch pieces for rings. It makes it easy to hold and uh, you're not wasting a lot of material that you're not using if you have a bigger sheet. What's cool with the Zona as you progress through the grits here, you can see that the shine, even when spinning, the metal of your channel and then the the, pol the uh, resin and stuff in the middle starts to really get shiny. So it's really cool to see how it 
really polishes from a dull finish to a really bright, shiny finish. Um, it's impressive stuff. If you've never used it, it's definitely worth a try. So I'm almost done here. I'm on the last step. I've got one more. The white is the final one micron polishing. And then this ring will be done. It, uh, you'll see here on the end, it'll polish up the iron pyrite just perfectly along with the resin. And then it will have that shine we're looking for. And there it is. So once you're done, uh, I'm going to rotate it here so you can see it. You can see that gold shining through. It's a little heavier on one side than the other, but that's okay. came out pretty cool. And then that turquoise goes really cool, really nicely with the iron pyrite. So you can remove this ring from your mandrel, and you are all set. And of course, you could make this on other rings than the tungsten, but this just happened to be a good choice we picked for this project kit. So this ring box uh, project includes everything to make this ring, plus you'll have extra cool materials. So hope you enjoyed this video. Please check out Turner's Warehouse and let us know if you have any questions.